morning to everyone. I want to thank the program committee for the um, for accepting our presentation in the CiberNet uh, forum. Uh, as Justo say, and uh, probably all of you know, uh, our work in the CiberNet uh, has been in relation with the cannabinoid system, with the possibility that cannabinoids could be uh, neuroprotective uh, compounds in the context of neurodegenerative disorders. And this is by consequence, this is a consequence of the role of the system in the control of cell survival. Uh, but this has another two, two, two possibilities of uh, therapeutic application. One of them corresponds to the possibility that uh, cannabinoids could serve as antitumoral compounds, uh, eliciting the uh, apoptosis of transformed cells. And this could be important, promising in the context of cancer, particularly uh, brain cancer, glioblastoma. The group of Manuel Guzman has contributed significantly in this area. In the other side of the coin, there will be the possibility that, compo that uh, uh, cannabinoids could set up a neuroprotective compounds, then increasing the survival of healthy neuron and also glial cells. And this is, of course, our interest and our promise in the field of neurodegenerative disorders. So um, uh, I will present three evidence to support this uh, potential of cannabinoids as neuroprotective agents. The first correspond to the possibility that the endocannabinoid system could be, in fact, an endogenous protective system against different kind of insults that may damage the brain. Uh, this has been a proposal by Rafael Machola in the Brew University based on the following observation. The first is that endocannabinoids have massively generated in response to brain damage in different experimental conditions. CB1 receptor, the neuronal, the typical neuronal receptor on the endocannabinoid system is upregulated in uh, some cases, not frequently because CB1 is present in neuron and neuron uh, they generate in the case of uh, neurodegenerative disorders, so it's expected a reduction in CB1 receptor, but in some cases there is an upregulation and the disorder that I will present today is one of the cases in which CB1 receptor is upregulated. And if CB1 is regulated only in some cases, CB2 is specifically upregulated in most of the neurogenerative cases. Uh, CB1 is, CB2 is present in uh, microglial cells, in astrocyte, and uh, is affected by the chain that these glial elements experience in the uh, generation of the uh, neurodegenerative disorders. Uh, this was a first discovery by the group of Julian Romero in Fundación Hospital Alcorcón, who was the first to demonstrate that CB2 receptors are, are present in the microglia that surround the senile plague in the case of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, we also demonstrated that it's also present in microglial cells in Huntington, also in astrocyte with this selective market of this uh, type of uh, glial cells, and more recently, we have found that this is also present in microglial cells in Parkinson's disease. This is the first group of evidence. The second uh, evidence, oh, sorry, uh, this, um, of course, means that uh, the endocannabinoid system could respond to the idea that this uh, silent system that is activated in response to different challenges, and the objective of this activation is, of course, the control of uh, brain homeostasis. Uh, the second group of evidence came from the different in vivo and in vitro model that has been used to see if cannabinoids could increase neuronal survival. Uh, here you have a list of the different pathological conditions in which uh, this has been investigated. And the major of this, so the most important uh, um, uh, studies has been done in animal model, in cell model, but the Possibly the challenge for the future is to develop clinical trial as the uh, clinical trial that Justo just presented in Huntington disease with uh, one of the cannabinoid-based medicine that has been recently approved with the Sativest. And finally, uh, the third part of the uh, uh, evidence of the neuroprotective function of the cannabinoid system came from the molecular and cellular mechanisms that are activated by these compounds and that provide neuroprotection in different experimental conditions. Uh, one of the aid value for the cannabinoids is that they, uh, they work in uh, on different targets, so and they can control different processes, and this is possibly one of the advantages compared with other kind of compounds that 
could cover a specific cytotoxic mechanism in the uh, neurodegenerative disorder. Cannabinoids could be uh, multifactorial in this uh, context, and they can provide uh, control and improvement in many of the, dif uh, of the different um, cytotoxic mechanisms that they are operating in neuro neurodegenerative disorder. Some example of this can be found here. Cannabinoids could be anti-cytotoxic compound. They can normalize glutamate homeostasis, and it could be done by a, a presynaptic effect on CB1 receptor located in uh, presynaptic glutamatergic ter uh, terminals, but also in the postsynaptic neuron in which they can control the entry of calcium and the activation of calcium-dependent destructive pathway. This would be an effect normalizing glutamate transmission, um, glutamate homeostasis that could be um, CB2 receptor are present in glial cells. CB2 receptor are present in glial cells. I put some example in uh, previous slides, and in this context, CB2 receptor could control the uh, effect of glial cells on neuronal survival flow, increasing anti-inflammatory mediator by reducing pro-inflammatory factors. And finally, cannabinoids could, be also, could also produce effects that are mediated by cannabinoid receptor independent mechanisms. Some of these correspond to the control of oxidative stress. This is a typical effect produced by this phytocannabinoid, CBD, cannabidiol, one of the components of the sativus uh, medicine. Uh, cannabidiol act on uh, the control uh, due by its chemical structure and the control of the production of uh, reactive oxygen species, mm -hmm. then improving the antioxidant defense. But other possibilities have been also proposed for CBD. In this context, uh, the effect could be mediated by uh, uh, a no target, at least at the moment, maybe another cannabinoid receptor tie or the involvement of the re nuclear receptor of the PPR family. Uh, in this context, they could add on different transcription factors, for, exa for example, the transcription factors that control the uh, antioxidant response of the uh, NF-kappa-B that control the inflammatory uh, scenario. So this is, uh, these are uh, proposals for the mechanism of action of CBD, one of the components that uh, is in uh, our objective to be investigated in the context of neurodegenerative disorders. So our group were in phytocannabinoids. This is important. They also work we also work in the synthesis of compounds that could be, um, uh, that are synthesized in the group of Pilar Goya in Instituto Chimica Medica in Madrid, and that could be selected of the different targets, pharmacological targets for uh, uh, neurodegenerative and uh, neuroprotein uh, therapy in, in these disorders. And we are trying to um, um, analyze this uh, potential in in vitro and in vivo model, our world is basically preclinical in different disorders that they are in this list. Uh, we have fluorescent more in some disorder, Huntington disease, for example. Justo just mentioned that we already uh, arrived to the clinical trial. In other disorder, for example, the, the one that I will explain here, spinocerebellar ataxia, we are in this moment in the uh, process of identifying the different pharmacological targets that could be interesting for a cannabinoid-based therapy in these disorders. As you know, uh, uh, spinocerebellar ataxia are, uh, pa are part of the polyku disorders. It's a heterogeneous group of disorders. They are all produced by an expansion of the <clears throat> of different genes that uh, encode different proteins, most of them call it atacin. This um, uh, mutated protein, they have an expansion of glutamine that is toxic for a specific group of neuronal subpopulation. In the context of uh, 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 spinocerebellar ataxias, the case in tonal motor incoordination and ataxia, of course, and the area most affected is the cerebellum, particularly different cerebellar neurons, and most particularly the Purkinje neurons. So uh, our project in spinocerebellar ataxias has two main objectives. The first one is to analyze the status of the endocannabinoid signaling using post-mortem cerebellar samples from scapatians. The idea of this, of the objective of this, is to identify potential targets. And the second part of our study is to work with a mutant mice uh, for this disorder, SCA3, that is the most prevalent within the SCA disorder. Uh, in this case, we also 
try to see, to identify the change in the endocannabinoid signaling and to conduct pharmacological study to see possible beneficial effects of these compounds in these mice. The first objective, the word in the uh, human sample is the word that I will present here that is completely finished and we are uh, just, we, we just started to work with the mutant mice that have been provided by a Portuguese group that work in, in this area also. So this is the uh, characteristic of the different um, subject patterns and control that were recruited by uh, whose, uh, whose uh, um, samples were uh, recruited for the study. And this is a first characterization of the uh, change in the um, cerebral cortex of the uh, scapatian, as you will see here, there was a, a dramatic loss of purkinje neuron, typical of these disorders. Also, there is a, in the same pattern, it's, it's possible to see uh, purkinje cell with different level of degenerations. Uh, we also observed that uh, the pattern has an important microglial activation and also an important astrogliosis, labeled in this case with these specific markers. Going to the cannabinoid system, the CB1 receptor was one of the cases I said before that in this case we observed a significant upregulation of CB1 receptor in the uh, parenchyma, in the cerebellar parenchyma of the uh, scalpatians. This happened in the Purkinje cell layers and also in the, in the neurons, uh, in the in dentate the nucleus. In both cases, the level that we quantified in the scalpatian was significantly higher than in the case of the uh, controls. This also happened in other areas of the cerebellum with increase in the granular layer and in the weight matter areas reaching the foliar surrounding the dentate nucleus. Uh, of course, the CB1 receptor were located in the Purkinje layer in Purkinje neurons and we did double standing uh, analysis to see uh, this uh, possibility using Calvin Dean as a, a specific marking of this neuron and we found a uh, good um, co-localization between CB1 receptor and Calvin Dean. The orthogonal reconstruction also confirmed this co-localization. CB2, CB2 receptor was of course, pre uh, located in areas that probably are very rich in glial um, elements. This is the case of granular layer, or also the white matter areas uh, rich in the foliar surrounding the dentate nucleus. In this case, also, there is an increase in uh, patterns comparing with controls. And when we did a co-localization study to see the cellular substrates of this uh, CB2 receptor located in these areas, we found that, of course, they correspond to astrocytes or they correspond to microglial cells. Something expected with the typical profile of CB2 receptor. However, it was really uh, surprising that we also find CB2 receptor located in Purkinje neurons. This happened also in the case of scapatian and uh, at a level higher than in the case of the control. This happened in the Purkinje cell layer and also in the neurons of the dentate nucleus. And when we did double labeling studies to see the neuronal substrate, we also found that this corresponds to Purkinje neuron, that they are labeled with CB2 and Calvin Dean antibodies, and the orthogonal reconstruction confirmed this, this uh, co localization. We also worked with uh, the two major enzymes, the two major degradative enzymes of the endocannabinoid system, the FA and the monacylglycerol lipase, and in both cases there was also immunostaining in different areas of the cerebellum, in scalpatian at levels also higher than in the case of the controls. This happened with uh, FA and also with MAG lipase, the specific enzyme that degrade 2-AG, the second endocannabinoid. This happened in the Purkinje layer and also in the neurons located uh, in the dentate nucleus. So, uh, in conclusion of this study of this part of the study, we can say that uh, both CB1 and CB2 receptor uh, experience a significant upregulation in the cerebral area, in different cerebral areas in the scapatians, and the inside that degrade, degrade uh, endocannabinoids, FA and MAC, experience a similar response. Of course, this possibly uh, is a um, paradoxical observation because we found that change in receptor and we change in the uh, enzyme that degrade the ligand of this receptor. We do not know at this moment, of course, what is the primary effect and what is the secondary. It's possible that CB1 and CB2 receptor are the primary change 
and uh, as a consequence of this, enzymes respond to, uh, to um, increase, uh, to, to reduce, sorry, the level of endocannabinoids or the ligand that activate the receptor. Of course, this is impossible to, to be studied in the post-mortem uh, human sample, and it will be studied in the SCA mutant mice. And the third conclusion is that uh, the presence of this endocannabinoid element, particularly the presence of CB2 receptor in neurons, open up the possibility to use this um, receptor and also the enzyme, of course, as a possible therapeutic target for uh, a future treatment with cannabinoids in this type of disorders. So this is the objective that was completed. The second objective uh, has been just started. Let me only to present a few um, preliminary data. The, the objective in this case is to repeat the same in the SCA3 mutant mice to see how are the CB1, CB2, and the FA and MAG enzymes in the cerebellum of these mice. Uh, an advantage here is that we can do a temporal analysis at different stages of the uh, process of the pathogenesis in the case of the scapatians that was not possible in the case of the scapatians. And the second is to conduct pharmacological experiments, of course, and even the possibility to cross uh, these mutant mice with one of the uh, CB1 or CB2 deficient mice to see if we can obtain an aggravation or change, of course, in the, in the pathological phenotype. This is a word that is, of course, uh, projected in the lab. Uh, we are working, we start to work with this um, transgenic mice for SCA3, the most prevalent SCA disorder. This has been generated in the group of Patricia Maciel in the University of Minho in Portugal. It's a, a progression of the past model that they generated with only, if I remember well, 95 repeats. In this case, the, the transgenic mice has 135 repeats and has been uh, generated with the cytomegalovirus promoter. So the, this group has a good experience in this kind of uh, experimental tools. So, and they have not published yet the observation about this, the, pheno the um, pathological phenotype of these mice. I can advise uh, some of the data that they have. This is the work of Patricia Maciel with a temporal analysis of the different uh, observation at the neurological level that they found in these mice. In our hands, the mice also develop a significant change in some neurological parameters. For example, there is a loss in weight that was observed in the week 11. At week 11, there is also change in other, uh, in some motor tests, but Rotarot that possibly is the most uh, powerful uh, experimental uh, test in this case. Uh, the first um, age at which we observe some reduction in the Rotarot performance by this animal is at the uh, uh, week 11, uh, sorry, at the, win thir uh, the week 31. Uh, we have also analyzed the brain of this animal with uh, micro pet analysis. We observed that we, we did this study at two different ages, animal at 21 uh, week of age, so a possibly a presymptomatic or early symptomatic uh, time for this animal, and also at 42 weeks uh, after birth, that this is a typical uh, age at which the animal has important neurological uh, deterioration. And what we found that was a reduction in the uh, metabolic use of glucose in this um, analysis, particularly at the age of 42 weeks after birth. And uh, well, in this moment, we have collected animal, we have collected samples from these animals at three different ages, presymptomatic, once the um, uh, pathology has initiated and when the pathology has progressed significantly, this uh, sample are in our freezer in the lab and we are starting with the analysis and we expect to have a good picture about the uh, atrophy of the cerebellum that uh, possibly develop in these animals and see this in parallel with the change that we expected to, found, to find in CB1, CB2 receptor and the enzymes of the endocannabinoid system, FAM, MAG and other enzymes. Once we know, we, once, once we have all this data, we will progress to a pharmacological study with the most appropriate cannabinoids depending on the chain of the potential targets. And I expect to, have to, to be here in a future uh, Cybernet Forum to present what this experiment has finally shown so us. Uh, and let me finish with um, 
uh, introducing people of my lab, particularly the people that is underlined in this list, that has been the, the, the people that has been particularly engaged in this study in SCA disorders, our uh, funding agencies and collaborators around the world. And here you have a recent picture of our work. And thank you for your attention. So thank you, Javier, for keeping the timing. And we have time for questions. Are, are there? Uh, yeah, the, over there. Javier? Um, so CB2 is sort of better known as uh, a receptor on the immune cells uh, in periphery. And I just wondered, have you looked at all in cerebellum to see if you see uh, inflammation or if some of the CB2 receptor staining you see is actually on microglia? Um, in the patients, we did analysis with two marker for glial elements, IBA1 and GFAP. And we found important level of inflammation. But all the work was done in the cerebellum, not in the periphery. Um, I imagine that it's possible that uh, CB2 receptor, for example, is located in peripheral immune cells, and it's a good marker of this. And it's possible in some uh, cases that there is activated the immune cells that uh, can cross the blood-brain barrier and uh, infect the brain and to produce uh, uh, some uh, presence of CB2 receptor in the brain. This has been done in other disorders. I don't know in this case. Mm 